On the track is a web TV show about cryptozoology, natural history, green issues, and whatever else the team feel like making up as they go along. Enjoy. What's in this episode, Mr. John? Well, Hennis, in this week's episode, I'm asking you all to be very gullible. Why? Because we're having an episode all about the gull. Because Richard Freeman and the gang are off to Tajikistan. In fact, by the time you watch it, they will have been off two days before to Tajikistan on their second trip to try to find the monstrous, semi-mythical, upright walking primate, the ghoul. I really like the old credits. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Downs. I'm the director of the Centre for Fortune Zoology. And welcome to... What? What on earth? That's happening over there! Or is it over there? I think it's over there! Da, 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 da. Hey, Moss, what's just the way it? Where are we heading this week? We're heading north, thank God. God's own country, we're going to be visiting Batley Tram Museum, then we're going to the National Institute of Whippet Studies. Let's try once again. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Downs, I'm the director of the Centre for Fortune Zoology and welcome to another episode of On The Track. For those of you not in the know, Every Wednesday evening at half past six and every Saturday afternoon at three we bring you a show which is in the ceremony of hard science, weird shit and surreality. What? I hear you say. You don't know what surreality is, so I think you'd better ask the boy Freeman. Surrealism is when you come back from the pub and find in your living room plenty of the elder and the crankiest stuffing a duvet into the world's highest kettle that's owned by a dull and rather selfish wasp called Honey. Well, good evening ladies and gentlemen. My name's John Dan and I've got some very interesting news for you. Oh. By the way, I'm the director of an organisation called the Centre for Fortune Zoology. And we, for the last 30 odd years, and they've been very odd years, have sent expeditions all over the world looking for mystery animals. And now I'm joined by my dear friend and colleague Richard Freeman, who. Hurrah. Oh, I'm Dean McQuinnan, and. Sorry. Miss oh. Isabel, mm -hmm. yeah. who are all going to, we're all going to be talking to Richard Freeman about his new expedition, which I believe will be leaving England on the 27th, Richard? The 17th. 17th. See, I can't get anything right. Where are you off to? Tajikistan in Central Asia. And the doing. We are going to the Kartang Valley. The expedition will consist of Dr. Chris Clark, Dr. Darren Nash, John Hare and myself. And we're returning to Tajikistan, which we visited in 2018, uh, where we were searching for a relic hominin called locally the Ghoul. 
and as well as unearthing many reports of ghoul, including attacks on human beings, uh, one of which was a biology teacher, uh, we also uncovered many, many reports of the supposedly extinct Caspian tiger. And one of those reports was by a park ranger who had seen one just a month before we were there. And we talked to hunters who had had their kills stolen by um, Caspian tigers. We talked to beekeepers who were out along the um, Romit Valley and had seen them. Uh, we talked to people who had seen females with cubs. Uh, and many, many people are going to the mountains told us that they'd seen Caspian Tigers as well as Gould. So we'll be building on that. We're going to a different area, we're going to the Kartang Valley where Boris Prushnia visited in the uh, 1960s and collected lots of reports of relic hominins. Now I'm not as convinced in the existence of the Gaul as I am in say something like the Tasmanian Wolf or the Orang Pendek when I'm where I'm nearly 100% convinced they're still around. But the interesting thing about the ghoul is that some of the uh, witnesses were people well versed in biology. The stories of the ghoul stop when you get above the tree line. So if it was just folklore, it would carry on above the tree line. But it it stops at the tree line, so they're only seen where there are tree cover. And everybody you talk to who's seen a gull, the first thing they tell you about it is that the thumb is set further back on the, the hand than a human uh, thumb. So this middle bit, the palm area, is longer and the fingers are longer. So the shape of the hand is more like the hand of a chimpanzee. So if you're going to make up a story about a monster, is it had odd looking thumbs the first thing you were going to say? The Caspian tiger is even more interesting because we know it existed and it existed till the 1960s. The last time we came back, we came back with a, a heap of stories of the Caspian tiger and I tried to contact every single tiger conservation group I could think of to tell them about this and the silence was deafening. Only one person got back to me and he, and he said, oh my, my uh, organisation only deals with Siberian tigers. Nobody was interested. So, Richard, is the word ghoul, G H O U L, in the English language? I think that's how it's good. Yeah. Is that the same word? Uh, it's the derivation from the Arabic ghoul, G U L. The original meaning of the word uh, was it's Arabian, and they were these man-like creatures, pale, hairless creatures that lived in the desert that would come out at night to feed on corpses and they would dig up human corpses and feed on them. The term has been used elsewhere for relic hominins that don't really resemble the um, legendary Gul of Arabia. But it is the same as the, the word shaitan that has been used for relic hominins in Central Asia as well. And that of course is the same word as Satan <coughs> and the Egyptian god of the dead Seth. Mm. It's, I think it, the, the, the name is applied because both are humanoid and strange. So with contacting the tiger organisations did you feel put off that what people had said about the tigers they were seeing did you feel that they were not real or uh, no i just think it, it they were incredibly lazy and dismissive these organizations i was giving mm. them information on the supposedly extinct race of tiger that was still mm. being seen by dozens and dozens of people and they couldn't even be bothered to deign to give me an answer i think it was laziness if you manage to get conclusive proof that there is a that the Siberian the Caspian tiger still exists, will you be giving this to the tiger conservation people as a sort of ha ha, you got it wrong? Very probably, yes. 
So what are your plans for this expedition? How are you going to go about your investigation? Well, we're going to um, one of the lakes, the name escapes me now, but one of the lakes that Prussian have visited and that's going to be our, our base camp and we're going to go out into the valley from there. I believe there are actually um, huts there that you can use rather than uh, having to camp under the stars which is alright by me because I loathe camping. Um, so it's a part of Tajikistan none of us have been to before. Um, hopefully the guides will have found us some witnesses to interview. We'll be putting out camera traps, we'll be trekking around the valley both night and day looking for the creature, looking for tracks, looking for any kind of evidence and uh, also we'll be obviously we'll be looking for the tiger as well and we'll be looking for any other wildlife. The last time we were there our camera traps showed foxes, wild boar, bears, and we uh, saw a porcupine one night which we for a few seconds we, we mistook for a grey long haired crouching figure until it began to move and we saw what we thought was a long hair it was actually the spines on the porcupine's back um, there are wolves in the area but we didn't see any but we'll be on the lookout for all kinds of wildlife funnily enough there are no monkeys in Tajikistan and uh, people often liken the, the gull to a huge upright monkey but there are no monkeys in Tajikistan You've got a new member of the team this time, Dr. Darren Nash. Well, I've known Darren for 30 odd years. No, probably, yeah, about 30 odd years. What is he going to bring to the table? Well, Darren's always wanted to come on an expedition. This is the first one he's been able to come on. Um, he's a, a paleontologist, or a paleozoologist, in fact. So he would be very interested, I should imagine, in comparing the descriptions to any kind of creature known from the fossil record. Although, of course, it doesn't mean that what's running around in Tajikistan, if anything is running around in Tajikistan, is anything from the fossil record. It's highly unlikely to have stayed static, even if it is. It will be something that has evolved uh, from some other species. So I think that's what it, but he's interested in wildlife in general and the place is full of wildlife so uh, it should be very interesting to him on multiple levels. Do you know is there a fossil record of higher primates in Tajikistan? I know Neanderthal remains have been found in Tajikistan because they had them in the museum in Dushanbe. They also had this really weird um, diorama of these creatures that look like gorillas with the heads of Neanderthals down on all fours. I'm not sure what they were supposed to be but it was like a small model diorama. Will you be going to Dushanbe this time? I'm not sure. I mean we're going to be into Dushanbe airport. How long we'll stop there I don't know. But if we get a chance to go back to the museum it would be nice. I suggest that if you do I would take photographs of any um, signage that accompanies that weird diorama so we can try and get, get somebody to translate it. Now if I remember last time there wasn't any signage with it if I remember correctly but that may have changed if it's still um, on display. Because it is interesting if you've got weird anomalous apes in a diorama in a country where there are stories of weird anomalous, anomalous apes. Yes, and there is a story from the 1930s of the Red Army catching a ghoul alive and sending it to the museum in Dushanbe. Um, it's in Proshnev's book that we reprinted. Whether it actually arrived there, whether there's any records of it, or whether this is just a tall story, I don't know. But with it seems with all of these things, when they say they've been sent to museums, remains of various things like the Lao, the, the serpentine monster from the the swamps of the Sud in Sudan. There were supposed to be bones of the Lao sent to the, the Natural History Museum in London and they have no record of it and this has happened multiple times.
there was um, links supposed to have been trapped in Scotland and sent down to sent down to the London Zoo, I believe, and that never arrived. I've always said if I got my hands on some physical remains like a skull or some bones or something and I was allowed to take them out of the country I would have to take them down in person rather than trusting them to the post. Well yeah and I would make damn certain that's one of the reasons I'm buying a 3D print, a 3D scanner from CSA you'd make sure that before you actually left the museum that we got a really, really, really in-depth 3D scan of it and you'd taken any samples you needed to for DNA. So, when are you going? The 17th of August and we're coming back on the 30th. It's all very exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm, it is. So what, in your wildest dreams, do you hope to... If I could be a fairy godmother and go, Bing! And so you shall. If I could be that. Or if Isabel could be a fairy godmother and go, Bing! See, she did it better than me. Isabel's your fairy godmother and she's just said that you are, she's going to grant your wildest wish. No, not that wish, Richard. Mm -hmm. um, what's your wildest wish for this expedition? How would you? Do it, it would be great to see and film a ghoul if they actually exist, if they're not just a modern myth, and or a Caspian tiger. And it would be great to f try and get some hard evidence. It'd be great to get something like a skull or bones to bring back something that was irrefutable. Which reminds me of... Do you remember when you went to Russia? I think it was 2008? Yeah. And you came back and you put a plastic carrier bag on the kitchen table. And it was there for weeks. And then my poor dear late wife went to look and see what was in it and found it was full of human finger bones that somehow you smuggled out of Russia. Yes, we had a, a femur as well that we took. Uh, mm. that, but uh, Gregory Panchenko had the femur. They, they all turned out to be modern human. They were from fairly modern human burials. But if you ever go back there, I want one of those domed skulls. Oh, the skulls. summations, yeah. yeah. So, V, have you got anything that you want to ask, Richard? Yes. Um, is there any chance that you could find someone trustworthy there who wouldn't know how to steal the evidence, that you could actually use some trap cameras and maybe bribe them or pay them to continue to use them for a while after, after you've gone? Possibly. So then they could just send you the cards. That, that, that might actually help. We've done that. Things. We've done that with um, Dali in Sumatra. He's still yeah. got. He's still got some of our um, camera traps, which he's going to be putting up again. He's, he's been leaving it a while, so the floor um, dies down, so he can go back unnoticed and put them up. Um, yeah. I don't think we know anybody well enough in. Tajikistan to do that. Uh, at some point we want to get camera traps that are linked to satellites so we can just leave them in situ and once a fortnight or so download all the photographs and do that for several years until the batteries run out. And the idea then is to try, this is a Louis idea, is to try and have a solar panel um, charging the battery so it could run, if not indefinitely, it would run until um, algae or lichen or something cover up the lens. Anything else you want to ask? Um, yes. Um, do 
do you think that if the girl are there, do you think that they're a, a relative of um, stuff, of things that you hear of in other countries, like the Almasti? It seems different to the Almasti. It seems slightly smaller. The hand structure seems more primitive and it seems more aggressive than the Almasti. So it sounds like it's a different thing altogether than the Almasti, but we don't know until we get a specimen of it and a specimen of the Almasti to compare. Are they reputed to attack people? Yes, they. there was one guy who was working in a water powered mill and the mill wasn't working correctly so he walked along the stream and found that the water had been blocked by two ghoul, one of which was about a male about seven feet tall and a female of about five and a half feet tall and they started hurling rocks at him and chased him back to the mill and he locked himself in the mill and they were jumping on the ceiling and banging the doors and the other guy who was with him in the mill said don't worry they'll just go away soon he was he met them before or they just left him alone but there were two people that said they were attacked by ghouls one of them was a guy who was uh, delivering um, beehives one night because honey production is huge in in um, Tajikistan and he saw something that he thought was a bear run across the road in front of him and he stopped the car and got out for a closer look which I wouldn't have done if it was a bear <laughs> But it appeared to have disappeared and he turned around to go back into his car and something grabbed him from behind and he found himself fighting with a ghoul and he said when it gripped him it didn't grip with the thumb and the fingers it just gripped with the fingers and it pulled him over and, it, and he said it had sort of yellowish camel coloured fur and an ugly monkey like face and dangling breasts it was a female and he thought it was trying to mate with him so he managed to punch it in the face and when it let go he scrambled into the car and drove off. And another guy said he was walking one early one morning before sunrise to his parents who were working in some fields and he was taking them some food and one of these things came out of the shadows and grabbed him by the arm and was pulling at his arm and getting river from the water and splashing it on him and he thought, once again it was a female and he thought it was wanting to mate with him. But as soon as the sun came up, it ran away. That was the story. That's strange. And are there any stories of them plaiting horse hair or anything like that, or grasses or anything like there are with um, Almasti and some of the some Sasquatch? Now, we heard that in Russia with the Almasti. Uh, we didn't hear it in Tajikistan. That's not to say. It doesn't happen, but we didn't hear any stories about it. Um, are they known to... Um, are there forests in Tajikistan? I would imagine there are. There are, but they're not like the big deep forests in the Caucasus Mountains. They're more like... Um, it's like the, the more arid scrubby areas of mountainous areas of Greece. It's right. not alpine, I thought it was going to be sort of alpine looking but it looks more like Greece. There's a lot of water around, there's a lot of lakes and rivers and stuff but the oh. earth is very stony, very dry. Okay. So if they're living out of the sun they must be living in caves or something. So yeah, or really or in the trees or something like that. So the trees are big enough to live in them. I mean, that they're big enough for tree cover, but it's not deep, thick forests like you would imagine it to be. Well, it wasn't right. in, along the um, the Romit Valley anyway. So if they're living amongst trees there, they'll be in sort of primitive shelters made with the wood <coughs> and leaves and whatnot. Or they're just building nests, or they're in caves. Oh. Yeah, so, okay. I think that's it, John. Is there any stories of them using fire or tool use? Not fire. There's stories of them hurling stones. I'd be surprised if there weren't stories of them using clubs and things, because you get that with the Armasty.
But we heard about them hurling rocks. One last question. You said just now about the guys in the mill and that the male was seven and a half foot tall and the female was five foot tall. The male was seven foot tall, the female was about five and a half foot. Well, I got my half in the wrong place. Is that the, is that um, typical of the sexual dimorphism of the species, or were they particularly large or particularly small? That was the biggest ones? one we heard about, this seven foot one. Most of them are, are the size of a human. They're about five and a half foot. Most of us, that was the size we were told mostly. So they're not gigantic like a Yeti or a Sasquatch or a Yeren. Is there any sexual dimorphism, apart from, of course, females having breasts? Apart from this one report about the size, one of the most interesting stories, and uh, this came from, uh, if I remember correctly, a biology teacher, and he said he was out with friends and they were cutting grass for animal feed, and they'd gone quite a long way up the one of the forks of the Romic Valley and they were camping out and he was woken at night by a commotion coming from the donkey which they had tethered to a tree outside and he saw it was light and he thought morning had come and the donkey was just braying because it was morning but when he opened the uh, zip to the tent he found that it was still night but it was a very moonlit night so it was almost as light as day and he said he saw one of these creatures, a, a ghoul, trying to strangle the donkey with the rope. And he got the idea it was trying to kill the donkey to take it away and eat it. And it was trying to strangle it with the rope and the donkey was braying. And when he emerged from the, the tent and it saw him, it, it ran away. But he said its, its eyes reflected yellow in light. And it was just covered with hair, about five and a half feet tall, but very muscular, long arms these strangely shaped hands but it's trying to strangle the donkey with the rope there is there is this piece of folklore and you find it everywhere where there's a a man like cryptid where there's a, a man beast about hybridization and you, you hear the same story in north america with the sasquatch in the himalayas with the yeti in russia with the almasty everywhere you get one you'll have these stories of hybridization and we heard this story about a woman that lived on her own after her husband had passed away and she'd been raped by a, a ghoul that broke into her house and she had a hybrid child and the child um, who was called Mr Yatin was still alive so we found out where he lived and then through the guides we did a bit of probing and we found out that Mr Yatin had died several years earlier but he had a daughter and we wanted to go and meet the daughter to see if there was any truth to this story about him being a hybrid between a gull and a human being because those features would have been passed on to his daughter I mean I, I suspected the whole thing was nonsense from the word go but we had to go and have a look so through our guide we pretended to be old friends of Mr Yatin and we were passing by we just wanted to pay our respects and meet his daughter and she was living with a relative who was her guardian because um, she was mentally subnormal and she was about 19 and she could tell you she couldn't tell you her age for example she could say her name and stuff but she had some sort of mental retardation and we met her and it was obvious she she was a uh, a pure human being and we got a picture of Mr Yatin and apart from having a a Pre President Brezhnev type mono brow he's very stocky guy with big bushy Dennis Healy eyebrows and a, a big beard like a badger apart from that he was obviously a human being uh, all the way he wasn't any kind of hybrid between a modern human and a, a relic hominid and we think this story just emerged because he had had a mentally subnormal daughter and it was a story put around that she was like that because she had some of the blood of the gull in her so there was nothing to that story at all well Richard thank you very much for giving up sort of 25 minutes of your morning 
Um, good luck from all of us here and on the track and on the track extra. Um, I don't know about you guys, Izzy and V, I can't wait for him to come back so I can hear all his fabulous tales. Yes. Mm -hmm.